um, both both valuable and entertaining. Um, so uh, Murray Price, I'm based here in Wellington. I'm, I'm a public sector account director for Salesforce. Uh, so I have a I have a number of, of um, a defined patch of, of customers. Um, that patch happens to be what we call white space. So we've, of the 70 odd customers that, that I have in my patch, um, one has um, some Salesforce in it and the others might have a couple of licenses of Tableau or other things. Um, so I've, I've got the tough job of knocking on the door and saying, Hi, I'm Murray from Salesforce. You know, how can we help? What are, you, what are your challenges, etc." cetera? Uh, I've been doing this for a long time uh, in various organizations. Um, and I've been doing working in the public sector for probably 20 odd years as well. So I ha have had experience selling into private sector, um, but a lot of background in public sector. So understand a lot of the mechanisms and mechanics of government and how things work and um, funding cycles and how to write business cases and you know, where the decision makers are and the, the hierarchy of, of you know, the, the interrelationship between agencies, etc. Um, so yeah, that's I'm not I'm not a technical person. Um, I understand enough to be really really dangerous, which is why I tend to keep my mouth shut um, <laughs> in those situations. Uh, but um, what I can, what I am able to do is, is understand uh, the business concepts and the technology concepts and bring the two together and say, is there a, is there a fit? So therefore, is there a conversation to be had? And then if there is, coordinate and orchestrate the right people to have the right conversation. Um, you know, from the C-suite right down to, uh, you know, what not right down to, across to, um, the, you know, the technology aspect of it. Um, yeah. So it's an, it's an orchestration, it's an information gathering and orchestration type role. Yeah, amazing. And what kind of problems are you finding that people are having when they're going and thinking about Salesforce? Like, is there a set sort of things where you're like, yeah, this could be a good fit? Yeah, this, um, so I've been with Salesforce, I probably should have qualified that since, since January this year. Um, and, and Salesforce can do a lot of stuff as, as, as software, uh, but it's not, for example, an, an ERP or a, or a finance system. So in terms of looking for the problems to solve, um, having an understanding of what Salesforce does and what it, what it can be applied to is, is pretty critical. So part of my role is to, for example, look in these white space accounts and say, we have a we have a, a sustainability tool, Net Zero Cloud. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. So, who are the sustainability managers in these organisations, and where are they on in their carbon accounting journey, uh, and what sort of conversation should we be having with them uh, at the outset, and then where does it go from there to the point where uh, there's uh, a potential opportunity um, to 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 develop and close. Wow, very. So, cool. lot, I'm sorry, a lot of that in the public sector, you go to things like statements of intent, briefings to the incoming ministers, where they will lay out what their plans are for the next five or so years, and they are typically business related, but there's also a technology stream to that as well. So there's there's great sources of information out there. So there's a lot of research that gets done. Yeah, very interesting. So we've got a couple of people here who are working in government currently, um, and as far as I'm aware, their departments don't have Salesforce. Um, but the role of Salesforce in government is obviously like becoming really massive. Um, how do you think that differs from from businesses? You know, B two B versus um, B two government. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the, ch the challenge that New Zealand government has in particular is is the the digital natives that are out there that expect services that government have and offer to be delivered in a similar sort of way to what commercial organizations do and the challenges for organizations like salesforce who have come from from the commercial world world where it's a customer 360 and it's about you know the next best action the next best offer and personalization of, a, of, a, of some form of typically buying journey to flip that and say actually this is not a buying journey but we still need personalized messaging to go to the citizens of new zealand um, so from the Salesforce perspective, we need to rejig our, our, tool, our tool sets to change the emphasis from one where someone's buying to, when, to one where someone's transacting or interacting or gathering information or providing information into government. Mm. So it's still about putting someone at the centre of the engagement, but mm. the conversation changes. And that's the challenge that, that, that we have as an organisation. I have as, as someone working for Salesforce, I'll ring up someone from Inland Revenue, for example, Salesforce. Oh, we don't need a CRM. Because the brand is so so strongly aligned to CRM, it, it makes it difficult to, to have the right conversation at the right time. 
So it's a matter of looking for those those other entry points into an organisation and saying, yeah, you've got a carbon accounting requirement. The you know, New Zealand government says every every agency must must be reporting to a certain level by 2025. Yeah, how can we help? Mm. Did that answer the question? I got, yeah. I went to saw a bit like that. <laughs> no, I thought that was great. I thought that was great. Um, I've noticed that you said you know quite a lot about this carbon counting. You know the the new Salesforce product that's out. Do you think that this is something that's going to be playing a large role in government and other businesses going forward? Short answer is yes. Um, the government's mandated uh, agencies to to up their game in terms of um, reporting on their carbon footprints, uh, and very few have any sort of tooling to do that. Most of it's done on spreadsheets at the moment, mm. uh, which have been consolidated back and sent up sent up to Treasury and you know, some of the other agencies that are interested in well that that report on that stuff. Um, and building your own is not necessarily an easy thing to do. So it's mm. quite a specialist area, uh, and in order for, for agencies to be able to meet the government requirements, they're going to have to buy something in rather than try and build something. And to be fair, I mean, Salesforce has, has has a version of this, as do some of the other large software vendors and some of the smaller software vendors. So mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a market, a market that's hot right now. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to be moving pretty fast, actually. Um, do you do you have much visibility over like other countries and how they're progressing with this? Or not to... really? No, no, it's not okay. something I tend to focus. I in fact, I don't really focus on the commercial market in New Zealand. So not only do I not focus outside of New Zealand, I actually only focus on public sector in New Zealand. Really. Yeah, yeah, you've got your niche. You got your niche. I bet it keeps you busy. Yeah, well, to, to, to be fair, we, we do look overseas for trends and what's going on in other, in other jurisdictions um, yeah. to get an understanding of what's going on. But I haven't done that yet for the for the carbon accounting thing. Yeah. Do you, Do you have any insights into the sorts of trends that perhaps we are seeing in other areas in Salesforce and that maybe might come to New Zealand? Yeah. One thing that came out of um, this, was, this, this is not something that might come to New Zealand necessarily, but one thing that came out of Dreamforce, um, anyone from the Ministry of Health or Health New Zealand or Māori Health Authority here? Um, um, I don't think here today, yeah. Well, Sandy was nodding his head, I saw. Oh. <laughs> um, so so uh, the Ministry of Health were at, at Dreamforce uh, a couple of weeks ago and presented on um, uh, their digital strategy. And the general consensus is, in the health area in New Zealand, we're probably 10 or so years ahead of a lot of the other jurisdictions around our use of data in healthcare. Um, now, I get that a bunch of people on the call are going to go, really? Is that, you know, how, how could that be? Um, which just goes to show that there's a whole bunch of organisations, sorry, countries that are worse off than we are in terms of the way that they use data to inform our health decisions, both at a macro level and at the, and at the, the level of the individual. Um, other areas, uh, for example, um, I'm, I'm working with the Suicide Prevention Office um, to, to help them uh, reduce the incidence of suicide in New Zealand. And again, they're, they're world leading in their approach to that uh, and want to develop a solution that's got applicability across uh, jurisdictions in other countries. Uh, what else is there? Education, we're generally well regarded in terms of a lot of what we do in the education system with, with some of the tools, but there's a lot more to be done. Um, I look after justice. There's a whole bunch of work being done in the courts system at the moment to digitise what is a highly manual process. Where are we a wee bit behind other jurisdictions in that particular space? Mm, mm. So you think these these areas that we're a bit behind in will be expected to grow over the, the coming five years or so? Or um, think, but, yeah. The, ch the challenge is going to be funding. Um, we're, we're not a large economy, and COVID sucked a whole bunch of funding out of the economy. You know, we had to borrow about $50 billion to, to get through the COVID hump, um, and that's left a legacy for the future generations to unfortunately to pay off. Mm. Uh, so that, that government spending is being very closely scrutinised. For example, with the change in the health system at the moment from the DHBs to HealthNZ and the Māori Health Authority, uh, there was there was a, a, a sum of two billion dollars set aside. That two billion dollars has gone to pay down all the debt of the DHBs. So wow. there's no new money in the system as they bring these other the, the, these organisations together, and they're looking at replacing all sorts of technology and a whole bunch of process change. But they have to do it from within existing budgets. So things are going to be tight going forwards. Um, yeah. That means it's quite a large 
um, groundswell that's suggesting we're a small country and government is a large part of the IT economy. It's around about 40% of the IT economy in New Zealand, is my understanding. Um, what can we do better around consolidating some of the systems that we have? For example, if there's if there's data sharing between government agencies, we only really need one integration engine to do that, rather than having each agency having their own and swapping data backwards and forwards. So these sorts of things are sort of being discussed at the moment to, to get better value for the technology spend that government makes. Mm, so the, the sales pitch has almost changed a bit where it, it's more about reducing reducing the extra amount of spend and just making everything as easy as possible, um, you know, on the same sort of system. Yeah, it, it, yep, yeah, it's, 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 it's getting more for the spend that we've got. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And, and everyone seems to agree that that's a matter of, to, to do that, we need to join up more data. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah there's, a, there's, a, there's a headline today on, um, what's the kid's name? Um, uh, let's have a quick look, sorry, I'm probably. Um, uh, anyway, who was failed by, um, in theory, the um, uh, Oranga Tamariki? Uh, Malaki, what was his name? Malaki. I'm just looking up his name. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Anyway, so so the, 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 in, the, in that situation where we've got a large healthcare spend, we've got a large social social policy spend, there's a whole bunch of money going into justice, for example. Mm. And yet, most of those organisations probably touch the same person. Mm. So, wanting a Tamariki caseworker or slash MSD caseworker, there's probably some police involvement in that family somewhere. They've probably been in the justice system. They're, they're probably in the, in the education system, but maybe not. Um, they, they certainly will be in the healthcare system. So, how can we join up the data from all those agencies to say, you know, you know, Murray's Murray's having some challenges for whatever reason. Um, how best do we? Do we solve that problem by wrapping a whole bunch of services around the outside of them, um, yeah. rather than a bunch of individual services that are not well coordinated? Yeah. So the conversation with government at the moment is, is we we can do better by by taking that approach and get better value for money. Mm. Mm. Yeah, sounds like a relatively small project, you know. <laughs> Been talked about for a long time, um, yeah. and now the, now with the change in the healthcare system and some of the challenges. Um, there's going to be changes at the Wadanga Tamariki coming up um, at, at, the, at the leadership level. Mm. Uh, there's there's a desire to do something, but again, we get into the the government collects data on me for a specific purpose, mm. and the legislation says they can only use that data for that purpose. Right. So if that data that that gets collected um, um, about me by the healthcare system needs to be used in the justice system, I need to I need to be able to provide permission for that to occur. So there's a whole bunch of backing work going uh, at the moment saying, you know, what is what is the, the privacy model? What is the data model that supports that? What are the what are the uh, um, considerations around indigenous um, peoples and, and their rights? So, so Māori in, in this particular country, but we're saying if we can crack an, an indigenous or a Māori data model uh, for New Zealand, that can then be exported into other jurisdictions where they've got indigenous populations. So it's, wow. it's very complex. It's a very complex situation, um, and, and we and we can play a part in it as, as Salesforce, but we're not the only organisation that, that needs to come to the table. Yeah, that's massive. That's massive. It would be cool for the Salesforce. <laughs> That'd be cool. Um, but like you said, it's a bit of a bit. It's a bigger problem. You know, there's a lot else going on into it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, in terms of you know this whole area that you're dealing with, there's an election coming up next year um how do you think that's going to play into it do you think that there would be an impact you know we've got election is there some way that that would impact salesforce work and yep, absolutely absolutely uh so so typically what happens in the public sector and again people on, on the call that are from public sector will know this um government will go into a, basically a shutdown probably early next year so unless there are programs in flight there won't be any new money that, that will be uh, um, signed off uh, and there's a good chance that, that where the money has been signed off and the project hasn't started it probably won't start till after the election mm. when you get the likes of three waters for example where there's a lot of activity at the moment around uh, the technology platforms that will need to support the, the the regional organizations that are being set up if national comes to power they're going to unwind that so there'll be, a, there'll be two years worth of effort from a whole bunch of people 
um, you know, to, to understand what the tech landscape looks like, to understand what the, uh, the commercial construct and the organisations look like, all that, the governance, etc. that'll all go out the window. So changes of government can have some quite major effects or impacts on a, on a range of different areas. Mm, mm. So old, old projects might be scrapped. Um, do yep. you think new projects might be started or um yeah there's 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 you know there's when when something gets shut down um it's because the politicians want to take use the money for something else typically right. um and yeah it's, it's it's the one door closes one door opens type scenario but unfortunately the door that opens may not be the one that salesforce can get through <laughs> maybe not at the moment <laughs> maybe not at the moment Never know. Maybe not. <laughs> and that and that's and that's the challenge in this role is is to understand what the future might look like um, you know, is it going to be a national league government? Is it going to be a Labour league government? Um, what, how's national feeling about things that Labour are doing at the moment? Is that likely to be put on hold or, or on ice, or is it likely to be accelerated? So that crystal ball gazing, you, you take quite a bit of time doing that crystal, crystal ball gazing and saying, well, if national do come in and they scrap three waters, who do I need to be talking to today? Mm. That might have a, that might be doing something, and, and you know, with the with the new government that's going to come in towards the end of next year. Sorry, if a new government comes in towards the end of next year. Yeah, playing a long term game um, with the long term connections. Yeah, yeah, very cool. So, I guess, like diving into that with your, your current role, um, is it something, do you want to maybe dive into how you got it? Is it something that you've, you've done similar work on in the past? And um, yeah, how are you finding it? Because you're not, you're not super far into it. No, no, but I, like, as I said, um, I've done this for a long time, so I, I probably I got into sales oh, well over, probably before a lot of you call the board, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's, say, let's say sort of over two decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I sort of fell into the to a sales type role. I, I started in, in more of a sort of a, a technical, not a technical, selling technology versus, um, sorry, physical technology versus mm -hmm. software, etc. cetera. Um, and it's sort of, bounced around a number of organizations, mainly multinationals, but some uh, smaller New Zealand-based organizations, which I really, really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a trade-off between the two. The, the smaller organizations tend to be more nimble. Uh, the larger organizations tend to have a, a better brand. Uh, and, and the critical mass provides things as an employee you don't often get in a small organization. Um, but conversely, as I say, the smaller organizations tend to be more nimble and can do things differently and quicker. Anyway. Um, so I ended up, uh, like I say, in various sales roles through, through multinationals. Um, I was prior to joining Salesforce, I was at SAP looking after five of their accounts. Um, and in this, it, it's it's like most things in the market, you you end up with a personal brand, either good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, and the personal brand is what makes you valuable or not. Um, so I've been lucky that I've been shoulder tapped for most of the roles that I've. I've done over the last 20 years um, and yeah and that's how I'm at Salesforce so I said come and work for us because we like what you do and we think you know there's some some good things that you can do for us wow that's very cool and so interesting um yeah because most people here are, are you know starting a fresh sort of career or jumping into a new industry this idea of personal brand is is really quite important um could you just talk a bit more about about that, about how you built that? Maybe some advice you'd have for people. Oh, that's that's a that's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I mean, I'd like to say there was a, there was a structure to it, and I'm and I'm sure there are a whole bunch of different programs for this, but it, it sort of just happened. Um, what what I've found over the years is that there's a, this is going to sound don't this is going to sound wanky. Don't take it the wrong way. Um, people talk to me. So I, I, I seem to be able to ask the right questions and, and people will tell me things that they may not tell, tell other people. So when I mentioned I'm an you know, information broker, um, so, so my, brand is to, my brand is to listen to people, understand the challenges, pull information from the other sources that I have and say, you know, is there a match here? And, and if there is a match, what does that look like? And what value is that, is that match to whomever might be out there? Um, and it might not be of value to the person that gave me the information. It might be of value to a third party. So I've, I've built the brand based on that type of behaviour, um, and that's what people sort of that's what people will buy into. You know, I've been recommended by customers. Um, you know, an organisation says to a customer, "We're looking for a new account director. 
anybody you know that's any good and my name's you know often comes up in those conversations um so it's it's a matter of having a level of, in, of integrity um that, that you you know say what you do and do what you say um you don't bullshit people uh you recognize people as people i mean that's that's absolutely massive everyone's everyone's entitled to an opinion however wrong it might be no no i'm just joking um everyone's <laughs> entitled to opinion and to say and everyone contributes to what it is goes on mm. at, a, at a business level at a technical level and i'd like to think that i've been reasonably successful in, in sticking to that philosophy mm. and that's how to build the brand that i've got mm. very cool what do you mean by integrity when you're saying that integrity is number one like how does that action itself that action itself by again saying what you know doing what you say saying what you do mm-hmm. not not denigrating people as they say it, it, people are people and we all pull our trousers on the same way in the morning you know <laughs> there's, no one, there's no one that's that's better than than anybody else we've all got a role to play in in whatever that that might be and when i've met I, i've met prime ministers i've met ministers but they're just people at the end of the day you know they've got they've got their own agenda and some have very personal agendas some are less about how can I how can I do good for New Zealand versus how do I improve my personal brand? Mm-hmm. And and apologies, this is not a political statement, but hopefully most will recognise us recognise us. Jacinda Ardern is building a strong personal brand because of the actions that she's taken. Mm-hmm. Um, so this comes back to yeah, so we we started with integrity, didn't we? Um, so her personal brand is one of of, of empathy, of of integrity, um, because that's that's what she's come across to be so she, that, that will take her far so coming back to the integrity thing um treat people as people yeah. at the end of the day yeah yeah that's so cool so i mean i think your personal brand is very strong you know the three points um for people who are selecting their own personal brand do you think they just you know sit down with a piece of paper and start to brainstorm out what attributes am i like known for what do i want to be known for and then try and go from there that's a good question. <laughs> Probably the wrong person to ask that question. Um, as I say, I, I, I sort of fell into it, but I would yeah. imagine there is a process you can follow. What, you know, what do I want to be known for? You know, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And can, you know, can I make those strengths? And do I want to be known as the go-to person that's going to fix the problem? Do I want to be known as the person who can pull, pull two people together? Do I want to be known as the person that can fix the, the you know the technical problem that exists? Yeah. Um, understand you know what it is you you want to be known for and then what are the attributes that, that contribute to that and then say which of those attributes do i have which ones don't i have which ones do i need to improve and work towards that but yeah. be prepared be prepared to pivot uh, as well so um things don't always work out the way you uh, the way you expect um but be prepared to pivot and and don't lose sight of moving forward you might have to go this way but go that way eventually yeah amazing and so have you worked in new zealand your whole life yes yeah 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 Yeah. awesome and being in tech this whole time that's very cool yeah very cool how has how was sap how long were you there so i was there just over three and a half years um again um got asked asked to to go there Uh, Mm. that was a a good organization first time i'd worked for a um a european multinational um Mm. and they they do things slightly differently but they treat their people really really well really Mm. well um, mm-hmm. So again, so coming back to the brand thing, yeah. And again, apologies. Um, this is not meant to, to piss anybody off. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't work for Oracle because I don't feel that my personal brand and Oracle's brand are aligned. So Ooh. when you do build your personal brand, don't don't devalue it by by going to organisations that you don't feel represent your brand. Now I've got nothing against Oracle Technology per se or whatever. I'm just not a big fan of their Elson. So you know, and I've never met the guy, and I've just, <laughs> I've just bloody um, bro- um, broken one of my rules. That we're all people, <laughs> but I mean, I'm, yeah, I don't like his personal brand. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's a really interesting point. So it's not just about building your own brand yourself; it's about who you're, you know, who you're working for. Um, yeah. I guess that could extend to who you're working with, like individual people or um, who you're hanging out with, and that all contributes to your personal brand, right? It does, it does. You're, you're often known, you know, classic saying, you're often known by the company you keep. Mm. Mm. I don't think many people extend that to the work, the, the place that they work though. 
you know, I think it's actually a missed. It's Misty. pretty. It's pretty important that you know, recognise that where you work and who you work with will impact your your brand. Mm, mm. So going into a first role, if people are thinking about, you know, oh, I'm going to get Salesforce certified, um, I want to start my new career, and a lot of the mindset is like, you know, first job that comes up, I just, I really want to get that. Um, and often it can feel like that if you're making a career switch, it's quite scary. Uh, given what we've talked about, how would you recommend people navigate that decision or that period? Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. I've always I've always believed that it's better it's easier to find a job when you when you're in a job. Mm. Um, there's some sort of seems to be some sort of bias against people that, that aren't currently in work for for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, and that's and if you're if you're starting out and you and you don't have your first job yet, that makes it doubly tough. But the key the key there is to again, if you have a network that you can leverage. And say, I mean, I've, there's a there's a guy at the moment who's who's working um, in, a, in an agency who wants to get into a sales role. He's not a sales. He's not. He doesn't have a sales background. He's got a strong commercial background. He's a he's a great guy. You know, comes across really well. He's got a strong strong personal brand. Um, so he's he's asked me you now. Can you keep an ear out? Find out what's going on out there in that sort of junior sales type roles. Mm -hmm. who, who should I go and talk to? So if you're looking to get into a into a role that you want, either First time switching, uh, first job, you know, switching careers, switching organisations. Look at your network and say, who who do I know in my network that might be able to help me? Who do, who do they know? Yes, you know, so this mm -hmm. is five degrees of separation. You know, who does mm -hmm. who does my mate know? I know my mate. Who does he know? Yeah, you know, who does that person that he knows know also? And if you don't have that network, um, you have to build it. And that's and that's just a matter of they, they say sales is a, is a contact sport. The more contacts you have, the more contacts you make, the bigger your network, the more you can, the more easily you can navigate through some of the challenges like looking for a new role or understanding what your personal brand is or where you should go next. Mm, so good. Um, it's actually just, you know, hearing your answer there, it's like a, a slap in the face of, you know, you, you do this as a profession, you network as a profession and, um, and you're very good at it. Uh, a lot of people aren't. <laughs> Particularly people who aren't in sales. Um, yeah, and I guess that that's going to be one of the challenges. I mean, I, I, I like talking to people. I like asking questions, and I like learning stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll sit there and I'll, I'll ask. I, I caught up with a mate last night who I hadn't seen for you know for twenty five years, and I asked him a whole bunch of questions. You know, and I learned a bunch of stuff, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. You now he probably felt I once was on a sales course, and they you know, had to do a mock. You know, uh, a mock interview or a, you know, a mock sales call and the instructor said, she said at the end she said i felt like i was a fly and you were putting a needle right through my through my back and then pulling my wings off one by one <laughs> i said look it wasn't meant to feel like that yeah it's almost like an interrogation types type, type yeah. scenario but you know that's I, I try that's that's one of the failings i have is sometimes i can go you know too far that way yeah um yeah but, but and that's and that's one of the challenges again i, I was on a on a, um an advisory board when, I was, when we were living in christchurch for um the local IT organisation down there, and, and um, you know, Mrs. Smith, that wasn't name, Mrs. Smith came up and said, um, keen that, you know, that, that Johnny has a career in IT, um, he can fix anyone that he's seen on, you know, on, on the street. Any problem, hardware, software, he can, he can fix it. I said, can he communicate to people? Yeah. Can he talk to people and understand what the problem is? He said, no, 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 he's, 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 he's really, really bright. I said, well, it doesn't matter how technically able you are, at some point you're going to have to talk to somebody. Mm. And so therefore, you know, one of the attributes that you'll need, doesn't matter where you are, is the ability to use, use you know, these and these in proportion. Two years, mm. use them in that proportion. Um, so if, you, if, if people are looking to build their brands, and, and they'll be, one of the attributes they'll need is communication skills. Mm. And that just comes with practicing talking to people, right? Practicing, but there's also there'll be courses, there'll be communication skills courses. Um, you know how how to handle certain types of questions, how to handle um, conflict and, and, and conflict resolution in, in in professional relationships as well as interpersonal relationships. Mm. Uh, so there's yeah there's there's things out there that, that can help on the journey to, to build your communication skills and techniques. Mm. Mm. I think um, if you're not talking to People every day in your job, like if you are in quite a technical role, um, yeah. you know it could be it could be quite hard to find people to be having these discussions with, having these questions and um, and things like that. So, do you think in that sort of scenario, 
you know, finding courses or like, there's other ways to do it is, is kind of the what you're saying there. There, there are there are other ways to do it. And maybe, uh, I mean, I don't, I'm sure most people will have some form of um, engagement with other human beings. <laughs> we're, not all, we're not all islands. Um, but maybe it's, it's practicing with your family. Maybe it's practicing with your mates. Yeah. Um, and just asking for some feedback. You know, how can I communicate better? You know, mm. if, if you want to say, you know, I'm, my, my coding is crap. You know, how, help, me, help me understand how I can code better. It's, it's the same conversation, but you just it's a different topic. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it amazing that people don't don't think about that though? Something that everyone does, you know, um, and not many people think about asking how they could do it better. Yeah. Some people, yeah, some people want to, some people want to get better out, and some don't. I mean, that's that's fine. But again, it, it's going to come down to what your personal brand is and what attributes make make that up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely awesome. So, in terms of kind of um, you know what's what's coming forwards in the next couple of years or or things that are happening around New Zealand in the tech scene um for people who are, who are just joining would you have any sort of advice for people in New Zealand specifically we've got a lot of people who are leaving to Australia um for better pay better opportunities um, yeah and wildfires and things that bite you and can kill you you know mm. <laughs> you know and then, and then there's all those bloody Australians to put up with <laughs> uh so we've uh, Salesforce purchased Slack. Um, mm -hmm. I assume most people on the call are familiar with Slack potentially um, for what was it, twenty twenty eight billion dollars or some bloody thing. Um, and, and I've got I've got a daughter that works in, in tech, or we've got a daughter that works in, in tech in Wellington, mm -hmm. and it's about changing the future of work. Mm. So, and and Rand's show off to bloody Europe for a backpacking holiday, you know, four weeks over, over there, sort of thing. Um, so she's mobile, as as most of the people I would imagine on this call probably are. Um, so staying in New Zealand is not a must must do necessarily. You can work remotely, particularly in the software space, um, even less so if you're installing hardware, I guess. But particularly in the software space, I think there the opportunity in New Zealand is huge. There is a massive shortage, particularly of Salesforce skills, but but IT skills generally. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to need to pay close to international rates because this, these skills are so transportable and the fact that you can do your work from New Zealand you, know, you, you, know, we, you can be a, you can be an off an off shift help desk operator in New Zealand for you know companies in, in Europe and the UK for example. So we don't have to travel necessarily to use our skills in, in an overseas context. Conversely we can go overseas and use those skills back in New Zealand if we need to because of the nature of the of, of the industry that we work. Mm. I I would see more of that happening going forwards and I see no slowdown in the, the need for technical skills or sales skills or other things like that. It's a matter of which, what sort of technical skills are going to be required. You know, cyber security, that's, that's a given. That's gonna be needed for a long time yet. But a lot of what happens uh, in that space is being, is being taken over by artificial intelligence and the software tools that do what a lot of people might have done. So when you, again, when you're navigating where you want to go, Trying to get a view of you know what the future holds is, is, is pretty critical, and if we all knew what the future holds, we'd all be millionaires. <laughs> yeah, well said. Ah, uh, well said. Awesome. Well, I don't want to keep you um you know m um, much longer because I know that you've got you know appointments to go to and things to do. Um, but I was just curious. You mentioned Dreamforce. Did you go to Dreamforce? No, no. They're, they're all in Salesforce. If you if you have a customer, you go. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. So, yeah. and being this white space, um, sorry, if you have your customers going, you go. Um, mm. Being in this white space patch, you know, I don't have too many customers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're still building. We're still building. Yeah. Um, it sounds like an awesome event. It's. Um, you know, I've heard some feedback from people that have been, and yeah, it's sounds like a pretty pretty cool event to go to. Yeah, it it, it does seem quite mad. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'll make I'll make the comment that it's the opportunity to network as is as much about the technical stuff you get they're both valuable um, um learnings that you'll take away from the likes of a dream force or any else, other sort of conference like that mm. so mixing with people moving out of your comfort zone saying hello to someone you, you may not know finding out who's going and targeting targeting that person saying look i've got you know i've got to go and find amber somewhere on the floor and because i want to have a conversation with her about this yeah um so that's so i would encourage anyone that goes to a dream force or any technical con sorry any technology conference 
or any confidence at all, um, have, have a bit of an agenda about what you want to achieve. And that includes the people you want to meet and see and talk with. Mm, good, good idea. Um, do you think the same translates if you were doing something virtually? You know, like a lot of virtual meetups, a lot of virtual chats? Uh, I'll, I'll say yes, but I'll qualify that with saying because I'm such an old part, I'm used to I'm used to the face to face stuff. You know, that's yeah. that's the way I do it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people who who haven't had the sort of say experience <laughs> haven't been around as long as I am as old are more familiar with um, you know the, the, the virtual stuff. The other the other thing I'll say is there's an awful lot of business gets done in the pub. Yeah, <laughs> or or you know on the golf course or. Or in, a, or in a more social setting than at a, at a conference necessarily mm. or in a virtual um, situation like this. Mm. You know, we're, still, we're still biological things after all, and the cues that we get in a face-to-face -face type environment, you don't you don't get in this flat screen scenario. Mm. Mm. So it's, still, it's still going to be important to, to actually meet real people. Yeah, absolutely. So if there was like a social sort of event coming up for, say, Salesforce, professionals in the community if you're looking for a job in salesforce that would be an excellent place to go so, uh, so are you guys plugged into the salesforce user group yeah. Like, yeah 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 so, so again you know just go along you see what see what's being presented find out who's who in the zoo for you know for the first one or two and then say okay i really want to talk to that person over there and just go mm -hmm. and introduce yourself it's it's a family it's it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a community mm -hmm. fantastic there are, no, there are no dumb questions there's only dumb answers yeah, that's a, that's a nice ending to that saying. I think I've heard that dumb answers one. <laughs> um, all right, final question. Um, unless there's any from the from the floor, if anyone has any. No, I'm, 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 I'm here for the, you know, for the, for the hour. If, if you want to take up the time, that's, that's completely up to you guys. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, please pop them in the chat. Or, um, oh, is that one coming through? Nope, no, I just heard something else. Um, oh, go for it. Yeah, it just me raise my hands. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you, Murray, for your um, information. And I can see why you're a cause information broker, because, uh, yeah, you are. It is a very inform informative session. Uh, interesting that you have um, brought up um, three water reform. Uh, so I'm currently uh, working at Manawatu District Council at the Three Water Engineer, uh, Project Engineer, I would say. Yeah, so um, we are facing a lot of changes at the council. And so I'll, there's one time I was asking uh, the council IT department, why are we not using Salesforce? It is such a powerful tool. And uh, the answer was very easy, because um, it's too expensive. <laughs> Yeah, just saying uh, that Salesforce is uh, probably not affordable uh, for a small council like us. Um, so if the water reform happens in the future, <laughs> let's say label still standing next year, <laughs> and uh, what, what role um, does Salesforce, um, would Salesforce potential potentially play in the three water, the four big entity area, and it's going to be part of asset management system or part of like a, a field um, customer service system. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, so, so I'm not I'm not um, plugged into that one at, at all, Cassandra. So I, I, so I, I, um, I, I'll give you my view of, of what it will be. So, so Salesforce don't play in the asset management space really. Yeah. We, you, you could build an asset management capability on the Salesforce platform itself. Um, so one thing I have learned is that at the end of the day, Salesforce is a platform. We happen to have built a CRM cloud. We've built a service cloud. We've built a carbon accounting cloud. Um, we've built a healthcare cloud. So we've, we've built these clouds on top of what is the platform. So an organization could buy the platform and build it themselves. Um, but that's not a very really efficient way of doing it unless you're a very large organization. So uh, my understanding is it's likely to be what we call service cloud. So this will be um, you know, rejigging the uh, the outreach into the actual consumer of water itself. You know, pipes burst in the bloody street. I got to ring someone up. No, I got or log a call somewhere um, you know, online, etc. It'll be the Salesforce tools that will, will power. Well, hopefully, will power that engagement with with the consumer at the end of the day. Yeah, 
So we're still very much focused as an organization on putting somebody, be that a customer or a citizen, at, at the center of an engagement that an organization might have over their, their life cycle. Um, for example, we uh, we do a lot of work in the recruitment space, uh, particularly in the military, um, where we look, we look at the entire recruitment pipelines from, from building the funnel of recruits. Who do we want to target as, as police people or as or, or in the defense space? Um, we use the marketing cloud to build campaigns to, to reach the right people. Then we bring them into the funnel, and there's a whole bunch of wraparound services that Salesforce delivers to that person as they, as they journey through um, from, from identify this talent through the talent pipeline into the organization, through the organization, and, and as they exit the organization. So that's what we're really, really good at. Um, so that won't be three waters necessarily, but um, uh, it's about the, the person, the engagement with the people, which will come back to service desk for three waters, for example, I would imagine. Yep. Sorry, that's a long answer. Does, does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Awesome. Very cool. Um, did anyone else have any questions? Hi. Um, I have a quick question, but I don't know if it's too like specific. Um, just in terms of like, because I don't know how sales works specifically, but um, you mentioned, for example, that Salesforce might not be the right solution for a specific problem. Um, what's like the process for Salesforce for like selling it? as a solution to the government? Do they present what they think could be a solution or does someone else decide that? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, okay, how long, how long have we got left? No. Um, <laughs> uh, people will buy things for a range of different reasons. There might be a, a need to have um, a specific function or capability. Um, they might say, actually, I've got some money and I just want to buy it because I want to buy it or I want to buy something because that will get me a promotion or that will improve my personal brand. So identifying the, the need of the organization, then who in the organization, oh, so I'll, okay, I'll, I'll rephrase this. In sales, there's three, three fundamental questions. Who cares? Why do they care? And how much do they care? So find out who cares about what, why do they care about that? And is that because they want to build their personal brand? Is that because they've got a problem to solve and their boss is going to kick their ass if they don't? Is it because they want to do, do, do great things for the country? And then how much do they care? So what are they prepared to commit personally into promoting our, our solution over someone else's solution? Um, how much are they prepared to go into bat to get the funding for that? How much are they prepared to um, talk to other de to, de to detractors within the organization who might be saying, you know, we want Microsoft, I want Salesforce. Well, how much are they prepared to, to do that internal selling? How much are they prepared to come back to, to me and say, Murray, we've got we've got Microsoft over here and I want to promote, promote Salesforce. How can you help me with arguments against Microsoft? Um, so the sales process can get quite involved and it, it will, depending on the size of the deal and the scale of the problem, you might be talking to the, you know, the CEO of an organization right through down to you know, the, the IT organization or the finance organization, depending on what it is. So you might have to have many contacts in the organization to understand the competing agendas. The CEO might say, yes, I want to do this, but, but money's an issue for me. Now, the, the people in the business might say, Salesforce is the answer. And coming back to what Cassandra was saying, yeah, it's perceived as expensive. So therefore, I've got to work on the problem. I need to convince the CEO that there is value in, in what, you know, what I want him to pay, or him or her to pay, um, or I've got to go and reduce the price somewhere, and I've got to make the case internally to say, we need to reduce the price because the value is not there for one person that's signing the check. So it's a really, really, it's a really, really complex area. It's, it, it's a hell of a lot of fun um, if you like talking to people and navigating and working on complex problems, which are typically um, a complex problem is a problem that has many stakeholders or, or many systems you need to engage with. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, if I've confused you, I apologize. Even for it, I apologize. No, I think that's really awesome. Um, was there any other questions there? Anyone? Have a look. Nope, no other questions from people at the moment. That's no problem. Um, selling to government does sound quite tough. Have you always been selling to government or? 
but for the past 20 years, um, and, and, and the challenge with government is they're subject to budget cycles. A commercial organisation, you can sit there and say, if you buy this, we're going to increase your, your bottom line by you know, 35%. You know, and, and, that, and that might equate to, let me I'll make, it up, I'll make it up, that might equate to $50 million. So they sit there and say, well, if I invest you know, $5 million to make 50, done deal. You know, that, that, makes, that makes complete sense. I'll just go to the bank and borrow that $5 million and, and, and make this happen. Mm. Um, government doesn't work like that. Government doesn't work like that. There's a limited pool of money that, that government has, that Treasury looks after, and there's competing requirements for it. Now, I mentioned you know, the, the COVID thing, sucking all the money out of the economy. Um, defence budget was cut. Um, you know, correction budget would stayed, you know, stayed stable. So there are, there are constraints in government you don't get in private sector. Mm. And you have to just find out all that news on your own, make sure you're keeping up to date with the latest happenings and policies and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, very cool. What, is, what does an average day look like for you? Is there such thing? Uh, it, it depends. Um, so there'll be, a, at the moment, um, doing some work in the, in the suicide prevention space, so getting a better understanding of, of um, the the support mechanisms that, that organisations put around people that have attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that look like and what challenges do those support organisations have with information flow, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, with, with, with being part of the community and, and, and the engagement with people, et cetera? And then how does that translate into, into something that Salesforce might be able to help with? And then comes back to, you know, who cares? Why do they care and how much do they care? So who actually cares about this? Is it the organisations themselves? Is it the ministry, like you know the, the support organisations? Is it the Ministry of Health that cares about it? And then who within that, or, or is it people across multiple organisations? Mm. So I'm unpack, so unpacking all those relationships, um, that, which I don't have, um, and again leveraging the network. So it's a lot of background work that gets done before you go you go to the table and say, here it is. It's going to cost you fifty bucks, and it's going to do that. Mm. So there's yeah the sales cycle is what we call a sales cycle are, are eighteen months plus. Wow, that's long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's long. I'm going to get paid on commission. That's not an, not necessarily <laughs> an easy thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time to wait. Um, that's but, good. Yeah, yeah, which is why yeah, multiple having multiple fires going is a good thing. Multiple, yeah. multiple, lines, multiple fires. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of multitasking. Yeah, yeah, and commission day would be good. <laughs> assuming, assuming they bloody buy it and don't buy the competition stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, well, you work for the competition if, now. If you create, you create a market, yeah. and then someone says, "Oh, actually, we're a Microsoft shop. We're just going to go buy it from Microsoft." Again. <laughs> but, but, but I should, you know, I should know that before I go into this. I should know right. we've got a competitor there, and if I create the market, how do I make sure that the business comes our way versus going yeah. down the competitor's pathway? And then you, you need to understand the procurement procedures and policies and rules and all that sort of carry on. Mm. So by creating the market, you're meaning like um, explaining the problem to them so they recognise that there's, there's an issue here that they need to solve. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, and an example I'll give is if we spent, if, if, we did, if we did healthcare this way, you're going to free up the resources to deliver another, um, you know, 5,000 hip replacements. Mm. Mm. And someone says, oh, we hadn't thought about that. That's a great idea. Why don't we go and have a talk to our, our, our technology partner over there? Because we don't use Salesforce today. Um, so that's the danger of, of mm. you know, coming up with the, the ideas that someone else would take those, which comes back to integrity. Mm. So part of what I do is, is look for, for someone in an organization who acts as what they call a coach or a champion, mm. that I've got a good interpersonal relationship with and, and won't necessarily um, you know, do the dirty on me. And you know, help. they help me with understanding their organization and I help them with building the, the case to to do something, the case for change. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Out of curiosity, um, just because I used to work in healthcare, I know Ministry of Health uses CIR um, for COVID immunization register, which is Salesforce. Do they use any other things? Uh, not not at the moment. They we've sorry, they use Tableau. So Tableau is a, is a Salesforce company quite extensively and there's there's some some um, some large things about to happen with Tableau and, and, and health. Uh, and we are talking to them about other aspects of that whole engagement with, with the community and people through that, you know, that, that sort of citizen-centric view. Um, and that's that, that'll that all come out as part of the changes in the health system going forwards, you know, with you know, Health NZ and, and um, the Māori Health Authority. Okay. 
Cool. Awesome. Um, all right, we've only got a few more minutes left. Was there any any last questions coming up? Any thoughts that people have? So um, thanks, folks, for taking the time out in your lunch hour. Hopefully, that's just been, you know, it hasn't been too boring for you, too boring for you. No, I think it's been very, very interesting. Actually, uh, we've covered heaps. You know, from from your own personal journey to personal brand to applying for jobs to government to what are you know how do you actually what's that sales process like? Um, it's been really, really good. Um, and thank you so much for your time. I mean, um, yeah, the fact that you took this out of your day when you've got so much going on. Um, it makes a massive difference and we don't usually get to hear from people such as yourself um, in these sessions so it means a lot that you you took this chance and came to share your experience seriously seriously it is, it is my pleasure you know as yeah. I said earlier you know we're all, we're all people um, and you know if someone someone here says actually you know maybe I'll pivot and maybe it might take me 10 years but you know maybe maybe selling is not a bad thing after all maybe all those um, um, IT salespeople aren't quite like used car salespeople. <laughs> maybe, there's, maybe there's some decent ones out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you've definitely proved that. Um, all right, before we go, could everyone who's got their camera off, could you please um, turn on your camera if you're able? Um, and we'll just do a quick group photo. Um, so if you've got your camera off, please um, pop it on. And um, we'll do a quick, a quick photo. Awesome. All right, so if everyone could just um, give a bit of a smile and a bit of a wave, and I'll just grab a quick screenshot. So three, two, one, cheese. All right, beautiful, got it. Thank you guys so much for coming along. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Again, Murray, thank you so much. Just cannot emphasize enough. Um, it means the world to us that you came and you know, shared all those amazing lessons. Thank you. My pleasure. Folks, enjoy the rest of your day and good luck on wherever your career takes you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you guys later.